Hey everyone, Mr. Kimson here, and today I want to talk about solving linear equations. Now, um, basically an equation is a mathematical statement that contains an equal sign, and both sides need to be equal to each other. Now, when two things are equal to each other, it doesn't mean they necessarily look the same. Let me give you an example. If we have our basic equation, 1 plus 1 equals to 2, right, this is a true statement. But obviously, 1 plus 1 looks slightly different to 2, but mathematically, they're the same. That's the same thing we're going to look at here, but now with algebra. Right? The idea is, we're going to have something on one side, which looks different, but it's actually the same in value to the other side. Let's look at an example over here. Right? I love using pictures. So here I've got x and three circles, and I want to work out, well, what's this x equal to? Right? Well, if you look at what we've got here, these three circles, let's say that these were the same three circles. Yeah, right. What are we left with? We're left with four circles. So it makes sense that x is equal to four here. When you're doing a problem like this, even though it's like a visual thing with the scales, basically you're doing algebra. You're not doing any of the steps that we would expect in an exam or something like that, but you're using the process of mathematical thinking to solve this, right? Let's look at a few more. Pause if you do have a go at these ones, because these ones are quite fun to be honest. Um, there's a couple for you to have a look at. This one here, we can see that this, um, weighs 12 or whatever the point is, let's say kilos, right? So each of them circles would be 12 divided by four. That's just three kilos. Same thing over here. We've got 24 of these total, um, of the total weight. And then we've got six of these triangles. So 24 divided by six, that would be four kilos. And last one, we've got uh, two eights, which give us 16. So this whole thing here is 16. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these um, squares. So 16 divided by eight, that's just two kilos. So you can see, this is the process of algebra. Trying to work out what the unknown is, whether it's like a, a shape or a value, sorry, not a value, a shape or a letter or anything like that, yeah. Okay, so what are some steps? Well, first, identify what is your variable, so the thing you're trying to find, so X or Y, uh, it can be any other letter, and rearrange it so you can find a value for that variable. Now, a lot of these you can work out in your head, but I want to get us use, familiar with this process of, okay, what am I actually doing? What operation am I actually doing here? For example, here, we want to solve the following. X plus 4 is equal to 8. So I want something plus 4 that gives me 8. And you can probably already work out in your head that's just going to be 4, right? But what I want us to be thinking is, okay, well, what operation are you actually doing to both sides to do that? Because if you think about equations like a scale, in order to get something by itself, in order to get the letter by itself, x, you really need to take something away. You need to get rid of that plus 4 that's there, right? And what's something that gets rid of plus 4? Well, if we think about the opposite operation that we have, that actually removes that particular value, right? So if you take 4 away, in an equation, what you do to one side, you need to do the other. Because like in a scale, if you take something away, you need to take away from the other side as well to keep it balanced. That's the whole idea behind doing this to both sides. If I get rid of from the left-hand side and I get rid of the 4 from the right-hand side, can you see I end up with 4? Because 8 minus 4 is equal to 4, right? That's a, an example where you could have done in your head. Let's do a couple of other ones. So same idea here. I've got y plus 7 is equal to 21. So the operation I want to be doing is I want to be taking away 7 from both sides so that I end up with y is equal to 14. And you can always check your answer, right? The idea is this is meant to satisfy this equation. And if you put y is equal to 14 in here, if you do 14 plus 7, it does give you 21. So this is what we're trying to do with these equations. We're trying to say, all right, I've got this letter y, and I want to try and find out what it's equal to, right? And we can even do it when we have subtractions, except this time, think about the opposite operation. What's the opposite of taking something away? You want to be adding to it, right? What do we do? I'm going to add the same number that I see there. I want to be adding 2 to that. So what I do to one side, I have to do the other, just like a scale. So m is going to be equal to 30, right? 28 plus 2, that's just 30. So that's some linear equations. The reason why we call these linear equations is because when we graph these, um, we can see these represented visually as a line, and there's really only one solution that we can get from these ones. Yeah. All right, solve the following. These ones are a little bit tricky now because what they've done is that they've incorporated this. What is this? This is a coefficient, right? And remember, a coefficient... 2y is the same as 2 times y. Right? So when I'm looking at this, I want to be thinking, hmm, what's the opposite operation of multiplying? Well, it would be dividing. Okay. So we've got these opposite operations I want to combine here. The opposite of addition and the opposite of multiplication, that's division. 
All right, so let's have a look at these ones. Now, when I'm doing these, um, although I have the freedom to do any order I want, I'm gonna make a recommendation. The recommendation is you undo, or you do the opposite of the last operation that was done, right? So if you think about this, what's the last thing that's tacked on the end there? The last thing that's tacked on is this plus four, because how do you, would you build this expression? You'd take uh, the letter Y, you'd multiply by two, so that gives you two Y, and then you would add four on the end, right? So this four is the first thing I wanna undo in a sense, so that I can end up my goal being, same as before, what y is equal to. Right? Let's do that first. Let's subtract 4 from both sides. So I'm going to get 2y is equal to now 12 minus 4 is 8. So then now I need to think, okay, what operation do I need to do here? Well, I've got 2 multiplied by y. That's what 2y means. So I want to be thinking about the opposite of that, which is division, right? So I want to be dividing both sides by 2. And that's what gives me the single y variable there, that's why I use the opposite operation, so I end up with just a single y, because 2 divided by 2, that's just one um, lot of whatever you have, and 8 divided by 2, that's going to be my answer, that's going to be 4, okay? And again, we can always check our answers that we've got in here, right? This answer here, if I put it back into the original equation, I should end up with 12. So if I take 2 multiplied by 4, that gives me 8, plus 4 gives me 12, right? Let's try another one together. All right. Now we have subtraction here, so just be careful. This time I'm going to be adding 1 to both sides because that's the opposite operation. So I get 3x is equal to 9. Same idea, I've got 3 times 9 over here now. So I want to be thinking about the opposite operation. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And so I'll end up with x is equal to 3. All right, last but not least, 6 minus x is equal to 15. Now this one's a little bit trickier because you've got a negative in front of the variable, in front of the x now, right? But we can still do this, right? So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to think about this six over here. This is not just a six, this is a positive six. And I want to undo this. I want to put this to the other side so I just have a letter on, on one side, right? So what's the opposite of adding six? Well, if I take away six, that's going to be removing um, both of these, uh, right? So I get rid of the six and the negative six, I get left with minus x on the left-hand side. And 15 minus six, that's just equal to nine. Now notice how I have a negative x is equal to 9. I just want what x is equal to. So how can I get x is equal to something? Well, that's where I need to think about how can I um, remove negatives without actually changing the expression. If you multiply both sides by negative 1, what you end up with is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so if you multiply by negative 1, um, negative x just becomes positive x. And you multiply 9 by negative 1, you just end up with negative 9. So that is going to be our answer. Well, the expression x is equal to negative 9, right? Because, and you can check this when you put it back in, 6 minus negative 9, because there's already a negative there, that is actually equal to 15, because two negatives, um, when they're arranged in this way, become a positive. Okay, so that's how we can solve linear equations um, that involve uh, different kinds of uh, problems and uh, variables.